Hello and welcome. Uh, we have with us Mr. Vadadi today. Uh, given his vast experience, I'll request him to introduce himself and uh, tell us how Niti shaped his career. Uh, this interaction is in uh, line with the alumni talk that we are doing to apprise you all about Niti and uh, hope students of Niti would enjoy listening to his talk and discussion. Mr. Vadadi. Thank you, Ms. Jha, and it's a pleasure to be here. I'm from the 17th batch of uh, Niti. My current title is Senior Vice President for uh, Global Purchases Supply Chain of PNG. I'm based in China and manage our global market operations procurement. Uh, the other part of your question is about how Niti shaped my career. I would say the biggest impact on me over the last, especially the last 10 years or so, has been my operations research background. I took a lot of operation research courses, which shaped a lot of analytical thinking and data, data management thinking, which honestly, that time, I may not have understood the importance, but obviously all of you know, that's one of the biggest skill set you can have today in data sciences. So that's really my short story. Okay, uh, so what are the skill sets do you think students of NITI require these days, uh, specifically during COVID time and in general uh, for business uh, in, uh, to, to uh, excel in the business? Yeah, I, there's really two sets. One is I would say uh, hard skills, the other is the soft skills. The hard skills really is to do a lot of what if analysis. You're conditioned to think about it, take it, which is scenario modeling. How do you model what if then else happens? What if this happens? What would I do? So a lot of what if modeling, scenario planning is key, which means again, analytical skills, data science skills, very key to that. The second skill, which is a soft skill, is your resilience, okay? You got to be mentally very, very tough. So how do you prepare for a worst case scenario? COVID is a worst case scenario, nobody expected. Are you mentally prepared for it? And that's the key. So uh, analytical skills, very key, data science, very key, but also mentally very, very tough. And that builds resilience physically and mentally. Uh, so the next question then let us move to, uh, how do you think students of NITI prepare themselves for international market? Uh, uh, by skill sets as well as NITI, how NITI should help them in uh, preparing for international market? Yeah, I think two things. First is, uh, I, you, let me start with the second question first, which is how is the institution NITI can prepare? Mm -hmm. I would say in addition to building the hard skills and soft skills I talked about, is build a lot of cultural awareness, okay? Build a cultural awareness, understanding a country's history or a country's culture, is the first step to actually empathizing with its people. So if you really want to be an international successful, a lots of empathy are needed. And for empathy, you need understanding, understanding of the people, their culture, their history, their strengths, that's key. And it's again a soft skill, and it's not necessarily part of a typical management or engineering background. So how do you inscribe that into it? So even talking about um, uh, society and the history of societies or different cultures, so going back to school books of history might not be a bad idea. Teaching history in a management school, you may find it not necessarily the most logical, but probably the most powerful thing you can teach today to our people, right? And then I think as individuals, we went through history by learning dates and times, saying when was the first battle of Panipat fought in India? Who really cares as to when the first battle of Panipat is fought? What we miss is the context. Why was Panipat a battle? Why did we even go to war? Why was World War II ever happened? Does it matter the World War II 1939 to 945? Or is more relevant to understand why was Japan forced to attack Pearl Harbor? So understanding the context and the root cause of an historical event shapes your mind. So as a student, ask the curiosity question. Why did World War I happen? Why are India and China now trying to fight a border? Why is it so important to do that? more focus on the context and the root cause why that gives you a more powerful understanding as to actually the context and then shapes your awareness and ability to fight the problem right that's what i would say both the institution and as individuals yeah 
Any challenging role you have faced during international international stint? Uh, I don't know where to start, honestly, Ms. Jha, because I worked in uh, uh, five different countries, four actually apart from India, uh, China, Japan, and uh, Singapore being one. But to just give an example of the cultural challenge, right? After seven years of working in India, I went to Japan, okay? Um, uh, that was my eighth year at PNG. Now I'm going from an uh, Indian culture, which I am an Indian, it's still not too hard. We will love to talk like I'm talking right now. We love to talk a lot. And I and everybody nodding their heads, everybody's participating for what we are taught in class called CP or class participation. Always be the one to speak up in a class, right? You go to a culture in Japan where everybody, the whole culture is about talking less and listening more, okay? People hardly talk in meeting, they're listening. And you may think that they did not understand what you just said. They actually did understand. They're still digesting what you do. But in culture, in group meetings, they are programmed to actually talk less and listen more. While in uh, Indian culture, in a group meeting, we are programmed to talk more and listen less, right? So I went from one spectrum of the, to the other, and I won't spare for a moment of time. I can always share that in, when I come to visit Needy. But yes. that by itself, going from one extreme to the other, was a great experience and how to condition myself or adapt myself from India to Japan. I have more stories for US and for China, but for some other day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, what were a few of the fun moments you had at Niti? Yeah, quite a few actually. And probably the, uh, one of the most funnest moments and... Uh, was actually sitting outside our PGP hall outside. And uh, we were br brainstorming, and this was coming out of some uh, class which has sparked us to say, um, what would be, there's a big coconut tree, if you remember, outside of PGP hall. So the brainstorming was all about what are the easiest ways to scale a coconut tree and break a coconut tree without actually falling and breaking your bones, right? So, uh, rest of the night from maybe about 10 a.m., 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. And uh, I have to admit, no, I don't care. With a few drinks uh, in your stomach, you were, we were ideating about what would be the easiest ways to scale a coconut tree and break a coconut. Um, and the heat of the moment, we decided that we need to have coconuts. So we decided to kind of throw stones at the coconut tree and break it down. But uh, that was one. But overall, I would say the biggest reason why we had fun it was a small group. It was not a big institution. It's a very small group. We all knew each other. And those small cultural moments in the common room in the PGP hall, whether it was for a literary quiz or whether it was a cultural program, whether it is for what's the good word or dumb charades or for a history quiz, or simply listening to a music. And we had a vinyl um, disc player at those times. We didn't even have a CD player, a vinyl disc player. And listening to our favorite uh, music and kind of having cultural quiz, those are the great moments. I think those, anybody you talk to in Niri, we could not forget, right? And of course, I hope Maridas is still there, but enjoying some of Maridas, especially the cooked dishes on a Friday night, were something which on a mess were mem memorable experiences for her. I'll stop there in the interest of time, but those are the funnest moments in Niri. Thank you so much for connecting with us. And I know students will enjoy. And whenever you will visit uh, Niti, uh, you, uh, we will uh, organize a guest session for you. And please share your interesting thoughts with Niti students. I will, Ms. Jai. In fact, uh, you know, in PNG, we have some, somebody told me 150 plus Niti alumni. Yes. When I joined, I was the only one in 1989. Oh. I was the first one. There was. There was somebody five years before me, but they already quit PNG by the time I joined. So when I joined at that point, 89, I was the only one from DT at PNG. And when somebody told me of 150 people across PNG in uh, uh, from Niti, proud moment. I felt really good, and I felt I owe it back to Niti uh, to come and share some of my experiences, stories, and if they're helpful to the future students, I would gladly do that. So uh, yes, next time I'm in Mumbai, I will definitely make it a point to come. Thank you so much.